There's a position versus time graph that we can plot and also the velocity versus time. But when we actually analyze the um, acceleration versus time, it's uh, an increasing straight line. So we're forced as scientists to admit that we have a third derivative effect, which um, for my mind actually lends itself to a, a anomalous new force, which I call hyperforce, uh, because we have to take a derivative of that to finally get a flat straight line a constantly increasing acceleration. So the Hutchinson effect has been used as a benchmark for a comparison to many other high voltage propulsion devices. Electrogravity, in other words. In 1989, when a visiting Vancouver news crew was setting up at John's lab to film the Hutchison effect, the target area was that yellow crate with the metal objects. But to everyone's shock, a sponge in the back of the room took off into the air and then fell back down. John didn't actually see it and was genuinely surprised. Like that. It went up and hit the ceiling one second, maybe two seconds, and then came down. Kidding. Okay, okay. no. Other objects in metal. RF fields that I use and Tesla waves that I use that actually form a keyway that opens up another area of time and space that may activate the zero point energy field and interdimensional reactions, let's say, to gravitational waves and time waves or chronons, if you wish. Perhaps we're dealing in chronons and gravitons, which are maybe particles, and somehow causing a distortion which causes Objects to simply break apart or pulsate in the center uh, of stainless steel bars and fall apart 